Hello friends, how are you all? Hope you are doing great at various aspects of your lives. Indian, that is Bharatiya literature, is full of tales that are embedded with wit, wisdom and life lessons. Being the advanced most civilization of the ancient times, it has documented some historical incidents in mesmerizing ways. Over the period of the time, these stories are traveled through various geographic areas via oral tradition and in textual format. These stories are told and retold and retold by many generations and thus some elements of fantasy and segments are reflecting the respective time and social norms are also added to them. That made various versions of epics like Ramayan and Mahabharat or Jai or Jai Sahita Mahabharat is part of came to existence. While some people are skeptical about the historical accuracy of these epics, we keep finding more and more evidences proving it to be the real histories. For some it may be mythology, for some it may be history, for some it could be just fantasy, but no matter what your personal beliefs are. These stories share timeless life lessons and no one can deny that fact. As mentioned earlier, Bharatiya culture has a beautiful tradition of reimagining and retelling these stories in a way that makes them more acceptable and impactful in respective social and geographical environment of respective times. You can also view the god as a kid, as a friend, as a lover or is a universal superpower no matter how you want to visualize that supreme being you can visualize it your way and you do it with utmost love care and respect that is at the core of the culture and probably that is the reason these epics are timeless Today we are going to talk about renowned mythologist Devdutt Patnaik's exploration of Ramayana. From our team I got a chance to read the Kindle e-book version of this book Sita an illustrated retelling of the Ramayana and here are my unbiased uninfluenced and personal views and reviews for the same. The cover page serves as the gateway to the virtual world explored within the book and thus it is responsible for making its first impression and we humans by nature are attracted towards the beauty so despite believing in the fact one shouldn't judge a book by its cover we must acknowledge its influence on a large number of book picking reading and or purchase decisions for sure Let us take a look at the cover page of this book Sita an illustrated retelling of the Ramayana As you can see the cover page is really attractive the use of light green and yellow color gives it calm and composed look it also reflects the joyous and challenging times in the lives of the primary characters in addition It serves as a good background giving enough room for contrast to the book title tagline author's name and other elements and yes an illustration done by the author is found its place on the cover page i like the imagination and simplicity viewed together in this cover design Now usually we talk about the book plot and our views and reviews for the same in two distinguished segments this book is quite different the story of rama and is known to almost all the readers it is quite possible that the story is known to you from the famous tv serial ramayan made by late sri raman sagar and his team the serial was majorly based on the ramcharit manas by saint tulsidas ji The quest to find the absolutely original version of Ramayana or Ramayana written by Sage Valmiki is almost futile as due to number of invasions burning of number of libraries decaying of old books and various other events have made it almost instinct The scholars have ever had gone through a number of scripts and versions of Ramayana found till date 
including those written in regional languages and based on the years long research have came to conclusive elements that are probably belongs to the ancient mos version of ramayana i am sure this research will keep going on the author here keeps various versions of ramayana as the base and when referring story elements in shorter or say sometimes a little elaborate or sometimes a summarized manner format add specific source referring to those elements whenever found necessary such notes make reader aware about various sources available the hard research work done by the author and inspires to be inquisitive and aware about how the story reflects the socio geo norms in different versions naturally all the writers or retailers have tried to keep the central thought as is and convey the life lessons to learn from the same in more time specific manner the author has beautifully talked about this history or mythology conflict and its consequences in this book Ever since colonial times Hinduism has left under seas forced to explain itself using european templates make itself more tangible more concrete more structured more homogeneous more historical more geographical less psychological less emotional to render itself as valid as the major religions of the eurocentric world like christianity judaism and islam The fallout of this pressure is the need to locate matters of faith in a particular spot. The timeless thus becomes time bound and the universal becomes particular. What used to once be a matter of faith becomes a territorial war zone where courts now have to intervene. Everyone wants to be right in a world where adjustment, allowance, accommodation and affection are seen as sign of weakness even corruption the author also mentions it is significant that the great epics of india the ramayana and the mahabharata reached their final form in the centuries that followed the rise of buddhism whose founder born a prince abandoned his wife and infant son to start a monastic order The Ramayana and Mahabharata are all about family. They strive to show how it is possible for a hermit to live a householder's life. There is no need to become monk. The struggle between the hermit's way and the householder's way forms the cornerstone of Indian thought. They manifest as Shiva's way and Vishnu's way. The author rationally talks about the time stamp when specific event could have happened at various places. For example, according to astrological data found in the Valmiki Ramayana, the abduction took place in 5077 BCE, the 13th year of exile. Or based on astrological calculation, Ram's date of birth is been identified as 10th January. 5114 BCE nearly 7000 years ago The book starts with a very emotional scene Lady Sita has just left the earth The author illustrates this incident and its aftermath with pen and words quite interestingly Blades of grass ends of her hair sticking out That is all that was left of Sita after she had plunged into the earth. No more would she be seen walking above the ground. The people of Ayodhya watched their king caress the grass for a long time, stoic and serene as ever, not a tear drop in his eyes. They wanted to fall at his feet and ask his forgiveness. They wanted to hug and comfort him. They had broken his heart and wanted to apologize, but they knew he neither blamed them nor judged them. They were his children, and he, their father, lord of the Ragu clan, ruler of Ayodhya, was Sita's Ram. It also shows the impact of Sita's living on Ram. 
and why he is referred as Sita's Ram. It also elaborates how the relationship of a king and his kings should be. This lines summarizes how Ram has to hold many fronts, take care of many responsibilities, and how Sita has contributed to the same. That is what it means to be a couple according to Bharatiya culture. It further elaborates Before your wife came into your life you were a student with no claim over property after your wife leaves your life you must become a hermit with no claim over property only as long as she is by your side do you have claims over wealth without her you cannot perform yagna you must only perform tapasya marriage since vedic times is not just a union of a man and a woman but an opportunity for two cultures to intermingle so that new customs and beliefs can enter an old household and revitalize it wedding rites in india have symbols that are rooted in agricultural practices that the modern mind may consider distasteful ideas that describes the man as a farmer who plants the seed and woman as the field who germinates the seed when iterating the story of ganga coming on earth the author reveals many pearls of wisdom for example just as ganga enables the rebirth of humanity and vegetation a woman enables the rebirth of a family for she holds in her baby the promise of the next generation to be a good spouse wife or husband the willfulness of ganga needs to be balanced with the serenity of shiva only then will the river of marriage create fertile river banks the continuing the same policy the author also elaborates the need of food and why the way of food preparation is also quite important the author says the kitchen is the first yagna shala for the kitchen fire turns raw food into edible cooked food that nourishes the body and prepares the mind for intellectual inquiry thought may be god but food is the goddess one cannot exist without the other through various after wedding rituals the author talks in detail about the deep meaning of them all the book talks about links between the way of living way of finding the divine fertility domestic life and hermit's life in quite an interesting way the tale correlates drought with monastic practices celibacy affects the reins adversely this reflects the discomfort with rising monastic orders even the hermit shiva is turned into a householder shankara by the goddess to ensure that the snow of the mountains melts to create a river ganga on whose banks civilization can thrive the association of women with fertility is one reason that in later times women were viewed as temptresses and distractions from spiritual activities that came to be increasingly associated with celibacy i found the definition of a tapasvi quite interesting and authentic too in the book tapasvi means fire tapa ascetic and apsara means water apsa nim Similarly when referring a character with a specific title the author clarifies why he did so Vibhandaka was called a rishi a seer because he saw what others did not he knew that food turns into sap then blood then flesh then nerve then bone then marrow and finally seed when seed is shed new life comes into being 
No living creature has control over the shedding of their seed except humans especially men. The way author talks about various ways of living and how a civilized species can be different from those roaming free without any rules to follow what makes humans different among species and more. Animals fight to defend their bodies. Human curse to defend their imagination of themselves. This imagined notion of who we are and how others are supposed to see us is called aham. Aham is constantly six validation from the external world. When that is not forthcoming, it becomes insecure. Aham makes human accumulate things. Through things we hope people will look upon as we imagine ourselves. That is why Janaka, people to display their wealth and their knowledge and their power. Aham yearns to be seen. Animals compete for mates and fight over territory. Humans do not have to. Rules ensure this. Animals do not eat more than they have to, but humans do. Rules prevent this. Sulabha continued, Humans are special. We have a mind that can imagine. With imagination we can, without moving, travel through space and time, conjure up situations that do not exist in reality. It is what separates humanity from the rest of the nature. Such mind is called Manas, which is why humans are called Manavas. You are a Manava with male flesh and I am a Manava with female flesh. We both see the world differently, not because we have different bodies, but because we have different minds. You see the world from one point of view and I see the world from another point of view, but our minds can expand. I can see the world from your point of view and you can see it from mine. Some like Vibhandaka and Rishyashringa, instead of expanding the mind, use it to control nature through Tapasya and Yagna. They do not accept the world as it is. Why? The book asks a lot of questions and tries to find answers to them. And that is the best way to earn knowledge. When your mind is open to absorb right answers, you can start asking questions, even uncomfortable ones, because you are open to the answers without any precondition. And that makes you not only wiser, but will help you going a few steps ahead in the journey of spirituality or journey of finding the ultimate truth. The author compares the mindset of Dasharath and Jana. I found the comparison quite interesting. The earth grants Janaka what he deserves. The fire grants Dasharatha what he wants. I choose the destiny of daughters. He submits to the desire of sons. The knowledge is the ultimate treasure and it's one's responsibility to keep it spreading of course, to the worthy ones. And that is why, when no student comes to a teacher, a teacher goes in search of a student. We often hear debates regarding theoretical and practical knowledge. The author nicely summarizes it as, neither is better or worse, replied Ram. The pursuit of theoretical knowledge develops the mind, while practical knowledge develops the body. Both have value and both come at a cost. It is aham that creates notions of better or worse. Atma observes it all and smiles. Even the comparison between Ravana and Kubera is interesting. Neither is really different from the other. Ravana grabs while Kubera hoards. The book talks about spirituality, like inquire into the human mind Janak and you will better understand the flesh and the world around this flesh. 
that is veda wisdom vedic hymns are used in three ways in rituals described in the brahmanas in solitary visualizations described in the aranyakas and in intimate conversations described in the upanishads the book talks about various particular skills required by a person based on his or her role in the social canvas here is an example where the author talks about the skills a ruler required how much punishment is a fair punishment who decides what is enough a king needs to be intervened balance his ruthlessness with compassion at the same time the author also acknowledges in every organization there are hierarchies which determine power to rise some use talent others use loyalty and still others use connections sita was a strong willed woman she was no shy princess of course her will power was her most prolific strength but remember she was a girl who easily picked up the bow given by parshuram to janaka it was no ordinary bow and not even the strongest of warriors were able to hold or pick it that shows her physical strength as well at the time when ram has to leave for 14 years exile it was she who insisted to go with ram no shouted ram taken by surprise then toning down the sharpness of his voice he explained the forest is no place for a princess wait for me here in the palace i do not need your permission i am your wife and i am supposed to accompany you to the throne into war and to the forest what do you eat i shall taste where you sleep i shall rest you are the shaft of the bow that is our marriage you need the string to complete it my place is besides you nowhere else fear not i will be no burden i can take care of myself as long as i am beside you and behind you you will want for nothing and the author beautifully summarizes it as she followed her husband to ensure he never fell incomplete in addition to acknowledging attributes of all major characters the author tries to show strength of each of them of course by remaining within the boundaries of the original tale or the most authentic version of the same so far known to us by sage valmiki here is how he acknowledges the integrity of lakshman's character lakshman sat with his back to her facing the forest ram said oh who can resist the beauty of one who reclines so carelessly under the tree lakshman sensing that ram was referring to sita said he who is the son of dashratha and sumitra and brother of ram and husband of urmila can surely resist such a beauty who ram says reclines so carelessly under the tree sita also came to learn that she shouldn't doubt the characters of the fellows from ragukul as they are quite proud for that and lives by the pride they will not hesitate giving their life when it comes to the honor of the family that night nobody spoke sita realized making light of the integrity of the men of the ragu clan was not taken lightly the book shares wisdom lines like impatience is the enemy of wisdom it propels us to jump to conclusions judge and condemn rather than understand and it also brings in many lesser known or unknown stories from ramayana and various versions of the same quoting from the book while the story of lakshman rekha fired popular imagination the story of the vibhandak rekha did not lakshman's line six to secure a woman's chastity Vibhandaka's line seeks to secure a man's celibacy. The former is necessary for social order. 
द लेटर थ्री टर्स द वेरी ऑर्डर ऑफ नेचर एंड कल्चर If I had to quote only one segment from the book, I would settle for what is the greatest battlefield? The heart of a woman who is in love with someone else to make her leave her beloved and come to your bed of her own free will. That is the greatest challenge. And so Ravana did everything in his power to make Sita fall in love with him. These quotes must have given you a fair idea about the quality of the book and you already know the story right reading various lesser known and unknown stories from the different versions of ramayan is quite an interesting experience in addition to quoting those versions the author gives his brief comments about the same wherever required that makes the book even richer The bibliography shows the extensive research done by the author for the same. This book is written in simple day-to-day -day language, making it easy for readers. To the inquisitive minds, it is a joyous experience to read this book. It will make you to search for the more details about the side stories mentioned in the book. To me, that is the success of the author. in summary it is not just another retelling of ramayan or ramayana it is a well researched commented about this is like elaboration of the timeless epic by referring various versions of the same it is a fantastic source to know a lot about ramayana i enjoyed it thoroughly think our views rating would be around 8.5 stars out of 10 So have you already read the book are you planning to read it what do you think about this book review do you find it helpful in deciding whether to go for the book or not please do share your genuine remarks via comments below if you have enjoyed listening to the review please hit the like button and do not forget to share it with your friends and other fellows whom you think such reviews interest more till we meet with our next podcast bye bye take care namaskar